Welcome to Coffee with a Googler. Today I'm going to be chatting with Kelsey Hightower, who's a developer advocate on our cloud platform. Now, Kelsey gets to work with cloud and Kubernetes and containers and all this kind of cool stuff. So, Kelsey, tell us all about it. What is it that you do? Yeah, so my role here at Google is a staff developer advocate, and I focus on things like containers, Docker, microservices, and 12 factor, all backed by Kubernetes. So, Kubernetes is kind of the anchor point where we help developers understand how to adopt some of these patterns to run their applications in the cloud. Now, say I've been out of software development for the past couple of years, and I haven't heard of containers or any of this kind of stuff. What exactly is a container? Yeah, so I think people that have been out of technology for a long time and they see a mobile device where you can push a button and your application shows up, I think this is what's happening on the server side for applications. You know, no matter what languages you're writing in, you can take that language, that application, package it into this container, and run it on you know, any cloud provider or your laptop in very similar ways. So I think the game has changed dramatically for how people build and ship applications um, on the cloud and distributed systems in general. Now that's cool, but where do you see this going, say, in the next year or two? With cloud, you know, the promise was that you would be able to run your applications anywhere. You just burst out and scale. So I think what Kubernetes brings to the table and containers underlying that is the ability for you to actually do that anywhere. You can pick the cloud platform of your choice um, on your local laptop in your local environment. So we're starting to get to real application portability. You write your application and you can choose your target no matter where you live, what region, what cloud provider. And Kubernetes is doing this all out in the open, open source project with tons of people in our community making that possible wherever you want to. Now, Kubernetes, this is pretty popular on open source, right? Yeah, so one of the amazing things about Kubernetes, it's an extremely popular project, mainly because it's open source, number one, but it also bakes in a lot of the learnings from Google and some of our other partners like CoreOS and Red Hat, and they've all come together and we collaborated on this very popular project on GitHub. So Kubernetes has become this anchor point for distributed systems and container management at scale. So you're seeing this openness of container standards as being something that's super important in the enterprise, right? So I think the enterprise in general is really fixed on having an open platform. Because let's face it, they don't want to get locked in again, right? Once you get locked into a particular vendor, you're pretty much stuck there. So the open source movement, maybe started years ago, has offered a way for the enterprise to not only select a partner in technology, but also to participate. So Kubernetes gives the enterprise the ability to participate and shape the future that they want to see. And we see this with very popular companies like eBay, AT&T. All these companies are using Kubernetes and also contributing Kubernetes in a way that allows their enterprise to adopt their own workloads into the platform. Yeah, I mean, I've built applications in the past, and I know that dependency management can be an absolute nightmare. So containers are something that you think could really, really help me with that, right? Yeah, so that's a goal. So containers you know, attempt to push the dependency management to the developer. You're building the app. You know what your dependencies are. So given a container platform, you have the opportunity to package your application from end to end and just turn over the box to the team to run it on the platform. Now, I understand that this can also go beyond enterprise, and games such as Pokemon Go have been using this. Do you have any other examples of how people have used it? Also, I think Pokemon Go is a good example of using something like Kubernetes, right? The goal is to make a game that people can play and not manage infrastructure. So for a company, um, in this case with Pokemon Go, you know, you throw your game back in into a container and you allow Google Cloud Platform just to scale it across as many machines as your users demand. So this is like the perfect use case where you just want to write an application, get it in front of people, and let the platform do the heavy lifting of scaling and responding to users. This all sounds really good, and if I'm a developer, you've just really inspired me to get started with this kind of stuff. So where should I go, and what should I do to get going? Yeah, you have tons of options. Uh, one option is to grab your laptop, all that extra memory, all that extra CPU. Um, you can download a project called Minikube. It's an open source project that gives you a single node Kubernetes cluster, and that will give you all the primitives you need to exercise Kubernetes, deploy your application. And the nice thing about that investment, you can take all of those configs, your applications that are packaged in containers, and push them up to GKE, our hosted Kubernetes environment on Google Cloud Platform. So Kelsey, do you have any advice for developers who are interested in Kubernetes and who are interested in cloud and all that kind of stuff? I think the best thing to do is go visit Google Cloud Platform and click the GKE button. 
And what it will do is in a single button, you can get a fully working Kubernetes cluster, like the same one that Pokemon Go was using. And you can ramp up really quick. So you can start out with, let's say, three nodes and scale up to thousands of nodes as the time comes. What does GKE stand for? Google Container Engine. We wanted GCE for a Google Container Engine, but it was already taken by a Google Compute Engine. So the K stands for Kubernetes. And if you want to get started, don't forget we've got a bunch of links in the description below. Go take a look at them. Kelsey shared them with us and there's some great stuff there. I can't wait to see what you build in cloud. I can't wait to see what you do with containers. If you have any questions, just please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.